Hey everybody, welcome to this uh, VHF UHF channel. And I wanted to give my first couple of weeks of, uh, you know, what I think of this ICOM ICR30 receiver. So I've been using it now for um, close to two weeks. And it uh, is a wideband receiver, of course, with a lot of features. I mean, the ICOM ICR30 is amazingly complex. So it's a wideband receiver. On this channel, of course, we would talk about the VHF, UHF aspect of this uh, receiver. So I wanted to give uh, my first impressions before I do a real full big review and talk about what I find cool, what I find less interesting. So uh, the ICOM ICR30 was released uh, somewhere in 2019, I believe. It is what replaces the good old uh, ICOM ICR30. 20 that I had here that I still have and of course one of the first things that people will ask me is is it better than the R20 and it is better in certain ways it is not in others uh, it is better because there are some new features that are interesting including D star and P25 decoding that um, that is nice and in a different mode, so when you go to the modes, uh, you could see here that all the different modes that you can decode, be uh, D-Star, P25, DPMR, uh, NXDN, NXDNVN, and uh, of course, uh, the Japanese standard DCR, as, long, as well as, you know, the other, of course, um, modes, regular modes that you can uh, decode depending on what uh, band you are and on what... Um, uh, radio you are because there's two radios in here so uh, this narrow. this is a very complex receiver and it goes from 30 megahertz all the way to 3.3 gigahertz this one is the US version so it uh, is missing on the cell bands uh, in the 800 megahertz I've been actually tuning a lot with it, and most of my tuning is done with the telescopic antenna that is enclosed with it, which is this one. Um, if I put this radio on a outboard antenna, forget it, this is bad. Actually, as soon as I put it at my outside antenna, it overloads so badly that it is unusable, pretty much here in Montreal. So that would be the first negative point that I have to say about the ICOM ICR30. That said, it is the same for my um, ICR20. But it is not a receiver you'll want to use with an outdoor antenna unless you live somewhere in the middle of the forest where there's no signals around you. Then it might be able to cope with it to get the signals. But apart from that, forget it. Even with the telescopic, I noticed that it overloads quite a lot here and to a point where it is sad because when I listen, for example, on Friday nights, there's a uh, Canada net, which is a D-Star Canada net on uh, this frequency, actually, this repeater, 448625. And you know what? The problem is the radio is overloading a little bit, so it kind of interferes with the decoding of D-Star. And so... I sometimes hear the stations and sometimes it starts freaking out and telling me, well, you know what, I can't uh, decode and it starts flashing D-Star and FM, which means that it can't lock on the D-Star digital signal. So it's sensitive on that side and it's sad because it renders what it could be an amazing radio into something that I'm not sure I would buy, actually, um, because of it's expensive and uh, if you live in strong signal areas, uh, it actually uh, doesn't perform very well. The other thing that I don't like is, of course, you can get the RF gain if you want. So, it, you know, there's the, the quick different options that you can go through. One of them is, of course, the RF gain that you can go uh, and, and check it out. When you look at the RF gain, what happens with the RF gain is that you notice immediately that one of the things that happens is that signals improve as you lower the RF gain up to a certain point, and then they degrade as the RF gain, of course, should degrade the signal. And this is kind of showing me that, you know, if I put the RF gain at max, this radio is overloaded constantly. I do live in an environment where there's a lot of strong signals, 
but still it's I find it a little hard to accept coming from a receiver that costs this much money and um, that is supposed to be a kind of a high-end portable. Um, so, you know, if you live in a big city, I tell you, this thing is overloaded easily and might not be the best radio you can get. Um, unfortunately, the amazing amount of features is kind of... Um, you know, for me, it, it the the performance of the VHF UHF ranges makes the um, makes the uh, more you know the, the more advanced receiver side less attractive. Unfortunately, two VFOs both not equal in performance. So when you actually uh, click the dual button, you can actually go into two different modes. One is limited in frequency range. The other one is much broader in frequency range. It's the one that goes up to 3 gigahertz. Well, the wideband receiver is less sensitive than the reg, the, uh, the um, D receiver, which is uh, the B receiver, which is the uh, more restrained in frequency coverage, which has uh, only um, part of UH VHF and UHF together. The uh, less sensitive side means, of course, it overloads less, but the less sensitive side also means that it's a little harder to really DX or get some interesting signals. So um, be warned, uh, my first few weeks of observations, unfortunately, I'm a little um, sad about how the performance of this receiver is degraded with strong signals and is not up to what I would have ex expected. And on certain points, my R20 actually performs better. So uh, that that is something to think about, honestly, because uh, for such a high-priced radio, I would um, maybe I would think about another model rather than buying this, unfortunately. So these are my first observations, and we'll have a real full review. I'll talk about the different features on the channel in the coming week or two as I continue using it and, um, you know, having fun with the radio still. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.